Hi, I'm Amanda, and I'm 33 years old. I was born with multiple congenital heart defects. I've had two open heart surgeries. The first one when I was just six weeks old, and a pulmonary valve replacement 14 years ago when I was just 19. Four years ago, when my surgical valve failed, I was relieved to discover I was a candidate for a much less invasive procedure called transcatheter pulmonic valve therapy, also known as TPV therapy. I've learned so much from my experience and I hope these videos will help guide you through your own heartfelt journey. Hi everyone, and welcome to our sixth and final video in this series. We've covered everything from the heart to symptoms, screening, and the TPV procedure. In this video, we'll be discussing what life is like after TPV therapy. Joining me again are my two congenital cardiologists, Dr. Dan Levy and Dr. Jamil Abelhosen. Welcome back, guys. How you doing, Amanda? Doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Great to be back, Amanda. So I'm sure you get a lot of questions about life after TPV therapy. And as you may recall, I had quite a few myself. So it would be great if we can go through some of the most common questions people have asked. All right, bring it. Okay, great. Are there any restrictions with exercising? Okay, I'll take that one. So our usual recommendation is no strenuous exercise for a month after the procedure. And this includes heavy weightlifting, whether you're working out or just lifting something really heavy. We tell our patients that they can start walking when they get home, but we generally advise them to start slow and not walk really long distances for a few days. This was such a relief for me to hear, so I could get back to my active lifestyle rather quickly. I was also really curious if there are any driving restrictions after the procedure. Yeah, that's a great question, and we get that one all the time. Other than just not being able to drive yourself home the next day after the procedure, there really are no restrictions to driving thereafter. And that's a big, big difference from surgery. Absolutely. I was so happy to hear that because actually a few days after, I was able to drive myself to go vote. So this next question is sort of an interesting one. I remember wondering with my new valve if it's safe to get an MRI or even go through TSA security at the airport, like would I set off an alarm or something like that? That's actually probably one of the more common questions we get, especially because MRIs have become such a big deal in evaluating patients with congenital heart disease. The valve that we use, the Sapient 3 valve, is made of cobalt chromium, which is not magnetic. So you can go in the MRI scanner and it will not set off the metal alarms at airports. As far as MRIs, the company that makes your valve is gonna send you a card with the MRI instructions that you should bring to your doctor's appointments when you're actually having an MRI scan. Absolutely, I think I have two and I carry that thing with me everywhere I go. Another question, do patients need to take a specific medication upon discharge or what do you guys recommend in general? Well, it depends on the individual and if they have other things going on with their health. Uh, but typically, patients will take an anti-clotting medication like aspirin long-term to prevent clots from forming on the valve. Others may need to take more potent clotting medications, but aspirin is usually taken at a minimum. That makes sense. I mean, it does preserve the health of the valve. So we've talked about infection in the heart before. Is there anything that I can do to prevent or lessen the chance of infection after procedure? Very good question. It's really important that we look out for any possible infection in the heart after Edward Sapien III valve implantation. We usually tell patients that they really need to stay on top of their dental care and skin care just like they did before the procedure. This may sound strange, but it's critical because infections that get through the skin or infections in the mouth can turn into infections inside the heart. Long-term dental care is incredibly important to lower your risk of infection, so be sure to go to the dentist every six months for a checkup and a cleaning, and always make sure you take antibiotics whenever you have any sort of dental work done. All right, down to my last question. How often should you follow up with your doctor for checkups? So as you well know, Amanda, 
every patient with congenital heart disease, and especially patients that have bioprosthetic valves, which includes either surgically placed or transcatheter bioprosthetic valves, like the Edward Sapien three valves, need to do regular checkups with their physicians to keep their heart valves healthy. Dr. Abba Holson and I usually have our patients do a routine echocardiogram and visit with us every year. Okay, you've asked us a ton of questions. Now it's our turn. Amanda, what was life like for you right after TPV therapy and how long really until you got back to your normal routines? I think it only took me about a week until I was back to walking the dogs again. So I think that speaks for itself. Well, that's great to hear. And honestly, a lot of our patients tell us the exact same thing, that they're back to doing their normal routines generally within a week. Our hope is that this new valve will actually improve the ability of our patients to exercise and reduce the stress on the heart, but most importantly, we hope that it improves the overall quality of life for so many of our patients like you. Well, and one more question for you, Amanda. Is there anything else that you want the people watching to know about TPV therapy and your own experience? For me, in addition to my amazing family, it's been crucial to find a good support system. I take advantage of a lot of CHD support groups, like the Adult Congenital Heart Association. They have a lot of great resources. I'm also a part of an organization that provides opportunity for children and families that face the challenges of living with heart disease. Being a part of the heart community in this way has really helped me with my heart journey. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you, Amanda. Having a community is so very important, so I'm really glad you brought that point up. Well, I wanna thank you both so much for everything you've done for me and also sharing your expert insight over the course of this series. I can tell you from personal experience, when you're suffering from something as serious as heart issues, you're hungry for any and all information. And what you've shared will be very helpful for patients trying to figure out their next steps in their journey. Well, I tell you, Amanda, we appreciate you doing it with us and we couldn't have delivered this message without someone like you willing to share your own experience. And to add to that, you know, Part of our mission is to educate our patients and their families about their choices and the various therapies that are available so that they can actually make educated decisions along with their physicians on what the best course is for them. So thank you again. And thank you for your partnership. I'm so grateful that transcatheter pulmonic valve therapy was an option for me and that I was able to prolong my next open heart surgery. It made me feel like I had more control over my life. So if you're interested in exploring TPV therapy, talk with your doctor to see if it may be right for you. Or go to pulmonicvalvetherapy.com to get more information and find a doctor near you that specializes in TPV therapy. Remember, keep educating yourself, stay positive, and stay empowered. I'm Amanda Ramos, and thank you for joining us on this heartfelt journey.